So can you briefly explain what PCOS is, polycystic ovary, ovary syndrome, what that is? Absolutely. So PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome, is the most common endocrine condition in young women, so women in their reproductive years. It is anywhere from uh, 10 to 30 to maybe even more uh, percent of women have PCOS. And PCOS is uh, not only very common, as I've just told you, but it's a very serious and debilitating condition. It definitely is disregarded. It's uh, poorly treated, unfortunately, by convention because it's so common mm -hmm. and because it is so, quote unquote, complicated, uh, it's been highly disregarded and mistreated. So the current conventional treatment for PCOS, and so let me just tell you what the uh, diagnostic criteria for PCOS is. It's women that have uh, expressions uh, more so than lab. Uh, results of high male hormones, so high androgens, high testosterone, uh, expressions of high testosterone. So that includes acne, body and facial hair, and other expressions of, of, norm, of high male hormones. It's women that have abnormal or uh, absent uh, menstruation and or ovulation. And of course, it's what the name is, polycystic ovaries on ultrasound, meaning many small fluid-filled sacs in the ovaries that can only be observed on ultrasound. So if women have two out of these three, they can be diagnosed with PCOS. It is a diagnosis of exclusion. It is a syndrome. So you'd have to, of course, exclude other things. But it is very, it's a lot more serious than is currently uh, given credit because people, uh, and I'll give you a quote by Dr. Fung that he wrote in our book. If PCOS was just about a few missed periods and a little bit of acne, then it wouldn't be such a big deal. But it is so much more than that. Even though a few missed periods and a little acne is very serious and debilitating in and of itself, but it's so much more than this. It is highly associated with metabolic syndrome and all the other insulin resistant conditions such as diabetes, obesity, heart disease. So this to say that young women with PCOS have a much higher incidence in risk of developing obesity, diabetes, and PCOS. You don't have to be overweight to develop PCOS. I was the lean type of PCOS. You can be very thin and have PCOS, but we do have a uh, much higher insulin resistance than uh, other women, normal women, as they call it, uh, with the exact same weight the insulin resistance in PCOS women is much, much higher. And insulin, hyperinsulinemia is the root cause behind all three diagnostic criteria of PCOS. So numerous factors that lead to higher insulin production, which then lead to hyperinsulinemia and then insulin resistance, leading to this reproductive abnormality, which then leads to, of course, um, not necessarily infertility because PCOS women are not infertile, but they do have uh, uh, a harder time getting pregnant. I was a woman with PCOS and I have two healthy children and uh, other pregnancies that I've lost along the way, which is the risk, one of the highest risks. There's a lot of pregnancy complications that come with PCOS, a lot of fetal complications, unfortunately, that come with PCOS. And then, of course, as I already said, uh, all of these... Um, metabolic risks, right? So we wrote a book. I actually have the book here because I just got a whole bunch of new ones. <laughs> okay. So this is the book that we wrote, uh, Dr. Fung and I, The PCOS Plan, and it's Prevent and Reverse Polycystic Ovary Syndrome uh, Through Diet and Fasting. And so we go through what is PCOS, uh, what causes PCOS, how to treat PCOS, how not to treat PCOS, because the conventional medical system, if you're a young woman with PCOS, you know this, the first time you get diagnosed with PCOS, your doctor tells you to take the birth control pill. Well, the birth control pill is going to do nothing more than mask the symptoms. It's not going to treat the root cause of the condition, mm -hmm. which is what happened to me. I took the birth control pill for over 10 years, never addressed the root cause of the concern. 10 years later, when I got off the pill and started trying to conceive, my condition got much, much worse and eventually had to go on to fertility, very expensive, as you said, fertility treatments until I was luckily able to connect the dots and uh, used, I did use low carb and intermittent fasting to help with my uh, condition very, very successfully. Great. Thanks for that info. So just to, to recap just a little, because maybe some people don't know a whole lot about this. Um, so PCOS is kind of that condition where women may 
in some cases they're overweight, not always, but more often than not, I think. Um, and then they tend to have um, some of those, you know, testosterone related characteristics. That's the facial hair and the acne. So, and then they have cysts on their ovaries, which you can't see unless you use an ultrasound or something, <laughs> but you can kind of see some of the other features a little bit um, in terms of the body type and, and stuff like that. Um, and then often trouble getting pregnant because of these hormonal disruption kind of problems. And the root cause, which you alluded to there, is usually um, insulin resistance, which which basically means having too much insulin because insulin doesn't work as well. So if your pancreas is pumping pumping out insulin and and your body doesn't respond to it as well, it has to pump out more and more to get the job done. And then that high insulin level impacts a lot of things, including the ovaries, and will cause some changes in the ovaries um, that you know disrupt the usual ovulation, et cetera. And and so that's that's kind of how it works. Um, and then. If any if anyone listening has PCOS and they want to really dive into it, then they could get your book that you just mentioned, the PCOS plan. 